Today on Mackie Tech, we're going to be going through the installation and configuration of the ad blocker Pi-hole. Pi-hole can be installed on Ubuntu, Raspberry OS, which is a Raspberry Pi, Fedora, Debian, and many others, but those are the most popular ones that it's been tested on. We're going to be installing Pi-hole on an Ubuntu virtual machine, then installing SSH, and then installing a local recursive DNS server called Unbound onto the Pi-hole. Finally, we'll be setting up our Unify router to use the Pi-hole as its recursive DNS server and then take a peek at what the results look like. Don't worry, we'll talk about why a DNS recursive server is important in a little bit. But let's first talk about why, let's first talk about what a Pi, don't worry, we'll talk about why a recursive DNS is important in just a bit. But first, let's talk about what the Pi Hole can and cannot do. It won't prevent you from accidentally downloading some malicious software on your computer, and it won't encrypt your internet traffic. So one of the challenges that you might encounter when installing an app locker is some of the websites you normally use and some of the apps on your phone, as well as games, might not function normally or work at all. So your mileage may vary. So let's illustrate what a DNS server does and how a pie hole can fit into this whole equation. Normally when you type in www.google.com on your smartphone's web browser, the request is sent to a router, which then sends the request to a DNS server. An example of a DNS server is Cloudflare, whose task is to resolve or translate www.google.com to an IP address sometimes with the help of other DNS servers, a process that's called recursion. I say sometimes because Cloudflare temporarily caches other domain requests. So if it already has the IP address, then it doesn't need to perform any recursion. Cloudflare then sends the IP address back to your phone's browser along with all the other tons of ads and tracking baggage garbage that come alongside with your request. So the way Pi-hole is going to work, the benefits of it is that it will act as the intermediary or the middle person so that when you send your request to your router, your router will then send the request to Pi-hole, which will act as its own recursive DNS server. Pi-hole can then filter out any adware or tracking software from your results before it reaches your phone or other devices, thereby blocking any ads, which is what we want. So let's get started and see how this works. Okay, so here we are in our Ubuntu virtual machine. I've done a couple of other videos on how to install Ubuntu, so I will link those in the description uh, so you can reference that if you need to. Uh, we're going to go ahead and install a couple different things so we can prepare for the Pi Hole installation. First, we're going to install SSH and we'll do a sudo apt install open SSH server. Um, Okay, so now we will enable SSH. sudo system c Alright, now we'll double check that it's running. Okay, we are running. Okay, so it is up and running. Now we're going to go ahead and install from our app repository curl. So we can go ahead and get the URL to install Pi-hole. So we'll just do a quick sudo apt install curl. Okay, now that we have the curl command installed, let's go ahead and install the install script. Okay, so here is the installer. This installer will transform your device and into a network wide ad blocker. That sounds great. So let's go okay. Pi-hole is free by powered by Donations. Good to know. Uh, static IP address. Okay, so we have to set a static IP address first. No problem. All right, so let's go ahead and go up to our network here. Go to right click and we'll go into oops, wired settings. And let's see, go on our click on our little wheel here. And we're going to go ahead and do IPv4 and we're going to go annual. 
So we have set up a static IP. Okay, yes, that is correct. So it's just a uh, warning saying that the, the uh, rather an FYI, that your router may or may not take the IP address you just used and use it on a different device, which, so for right now, we're going to be going ahead and just using Cloudflare for our DNS provider. We're gonna change that later. So now it's saying that it's going to include a free block list from this guy, Stephen Black. So we're going to go ahead and say yes to this. Yes, of course, we want to install the webman interface. Yes, we do. Uh, we're going to enable query logging. Yes. So I'm going to go ahead and hide the domains. Okay, so the installation is complete. And you can see here that it has installed the web interface at the 192.168.1.52. 252 slash admin and it's provided us with our password very important that you write down this password it's going to ask you when you first log in so i'm going to say okay and installation is complete so now let's go ahead and open up a separate web browser and see what we can see all right so let's go ahead and navigate to our piehold admin right there and we're logged in so first thing we see, we're going to zoom in a little bit and we can see that we have our total queries, which are zero so far. Those are queries from devices on the network to Pi-hole, and we haven't set it up yet, so there are none. And we have a number here of domains on our ad list, and this is from the Stephen Black list that we installed upon installation of the Pi, or rather that was added. And this is where the GitHub content is coming from. And I can disable that if I want to. I can also add other domain blockers here. I just put in the address and I put in the comments and then I click on add and it adds it to our list. We're going to go ahead and stick with this just for now. I just wanted to show you a couple of the things here real quick. We have our dashboard again here. And then we have our query log. And our query log is going to show all the different queries that are coming through and then we have if we scroll down to add list this is just going to show the different domains again that we just saw a second ago we have our settings here and if we go under our settings we have a couple different options down here we can power it off we can restart it we can restart the dns resolver if we want to up here we have our dns that we can set up and right now it's set up to cloudflare which is fine we're going to change that in just a second as soon as we set up unbound but right now we'll leave it web interface and this is where you can control the theme i'm going to change it to dark because i like dark and change the temperature to fahrenheit because we are in chicago and click on save and then there's also on the very bottom here there's a donate button that you can use if you want to contribute to the project so from here we're going to go ahead and open up our terminal and we're going to install unbound onto the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so once again, we're at the Pi Hole documentation website, and I'll leave a link for this in the description amongst everything else. It talks about what a DNS resolver is, what a DNS server is, all the stuff you can read about it here. It's pretty straightforward to put unbound in here. It's a simple command. There is a certain part that we'll have to copy and paste into a file. We're gonna open up our terminal. So the command is sudo. And Let's say enter. Okay, that is installed. Now we're going to configure Unbound. And just to get put this back up here for reference on the PyHole's documentation, it wants us to grab this information. We can copy it, and we're going to be making a file called PyHole.cnf. So what we'll do is we'll copy that, and we'll open up our terminal. And Unbound has been installed, so we'll go to cd.unbound and then we're going to create a file so we'll say sudo nano pi hole pi dash hole dot c o n f and then we're going to paste the main thing you want to capture here is we're using the interface 127.0.0.1 with port number 5335. Essentially what that means is that the PyHole is gonna be using itself as its recursive DNS server. This IP address, the 127, so that is designated so the device can talk to itself. So let's go ahead and save this. 
control O and say, and then we're gonna control exit. So here we are back at the Pi-hole interface and we're gonna go to settings and go to DNS and we're gonna put in our custom DNS that we saw before and we're gonna tell the Pi to use itself and we wanna make sure this is a hashtag and uncheck these for Cloudflare. We're not gonna be using Cloudflare and it's saved and we are good to go. So that is a green light. So now if we go to our dashboard, we refresh it, nothing's happening yet. And that's just because we have not told our router that this is gonna be our new DNS. So we'll go over to our Unify network switch and you can see that I have about five, six VLANs, seven VLANs. I have a main LAN, I have a, a guest, I have an IoT, I have a camera, and I have a couple networks for my servers up here for my trusted and or untrusted servers. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to go over to Macaulay's guest, click on that, then I'm going to go down to my network setup where it has DNS server. And right now it's set to auto, which means that it's going to be going through this router or my gateway, which is set up. So I'm going to uncheck this and then I'm going to go ahead and put in 192-168.1.252 which is the IP address for the pie hole. Now that that's done, first I'm going to go over to profiles. And what I want to do is I want to create a profile for a port on the Raspberry Pi which is going to be 5335. I'm going to use it as a policy for my Macaulay guest to go through so it has access to the Raspberry Pi because right now it doesn't allow Macaulay guest to interact with my main VLAN. So now I'm going to go ahead and click on create new. I'm going to click on the object name, Pi Hole, and then under the port I'm going to go 5335, click on add, and then click on add. So now the object is in there next to my other ones for my other networks. Now we're gonna go over to security and we're gonna apply this new rule. And this is the new firewall update from Unify, which is very, very nice. So I'm gonna to go to my internal policies here. And right now we have a number of other blocks here so that my different networks can't interact. I'm gonna click on create policy. And then on the right here, I'm gonna say Macaulay Guest to pi hole or allow Macaulay guest to pi hole. Source zone is internal. Action is going to be allow. Destination zone is going to be internal. And we're going to click on select so we can select the VLAN. And here it is, Macaulay's guest. So we'll click on that and click on save. And now we have port, we have any. And we're going to go down to action. We're going to click on allow, which is fine. And it's going to be an object. So the object, we're going to click on this drop down and then we're going to click on pie hole. And then I'm going to move myself out of the way a little bit here. And if I want to, I can also, I'm going to say IPv4. I'm going to leave everything else as default. So if we go back to our pie hole, we're already starting to get a couple of different queries here. Right now we're on Macaulay Guest, which is fine. So let's go ahead and we're going to load a web page and see what happens. All right, so let's go to msn.com. And, uh, you know, it's not bad. We have a couple of different uh, ads on here, but not as bad as I thought. Let's look at our pie hole. So we've already got six queries blocked, 6.2%. 6 if I go to Yahoo, a couple different ads. These are rife with ads, so it's hard to get them all. I got 149 queries, 5.4% are blocked. So you can kind of play with this and you can also come in here and you can add more domains in here if you want to block more ads. If you're not having a great experience and you're still seeing a lot of stuff come through, you can certainly come in here and add more domains. Now, one of the interesting things you can also do if you want to is you can make this device specific. So if you want to, you can come in here under clients and you can add a certain IP or a certain name of a server if you want or a device and add it here. I had someone ask a question on one of my groups if he can block a like his PlayStation. And you certainly can. If you know the IP address, you just pop it in here and click on add. 
and it'll add it as a as one of its clients that's definitely something you can do if you want to make it very specific and not to everything on your network so hopefully that makes sense so today on Mackie Tech we talked about installing and configuring the ad blocker pie hole on Mackie Tech and we talked about the different ways you can configure it different ways you can set it up uh, in our case we went ahead and set it up on one of our VLANs so it has a lot of potential and has a lot of utility, but you just have to be, I would just be conservative with it when you're just starting out. Make sure you research it. Make sure you go to the Piehole website to make sure you know what you're doing before you start messing with it. There's a lot of good documentation on the website and there's a lot of different ways you can configure the Piehole, but just make sure that you're careful so you don't shut down your whole network in the process. So hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a like and make sure that you are subscribed to Mackie Tech so you don't miss any of our other upcoming videos. Thank you very much for watching and we'll be talking to you again very soon.